Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're all having a good day. Guess what? I've been making 10 inch cakes again. What an exciting life I lead. <laughs> so I just filled and semi coated another one, and I'm thinking I want to add a little bit of colour. It's a strawberries and cream cake inside, so my thoughts are a kind of red slash pink buttercream as well. I'm not going to coat the whole thing in a red buttercream because I just think that would be ghastly, but I'm going to do a kind of marbled effect. Okay, so here is my butterized thing, which I prepared earlier, of course. I've only got a small amount, so you're not going to need much. If you want to see how I make butterized thing, I'm going to link the video hopefully at the top of the screen, if not it will be in the description. Now I don't like to add too much food colouring to my cakes and red butter icing or like black butter icing is so hard to achieve without adding like loads and loads of colour and that's why I'm just doing a small amount and I'm going to marble it through. The one that I'm using is the Sugar Flare Red Extra, extra extra and I'm going to just add kind of smallish amounts at a time. As I say, I probably will have to add quite a lot, even just for this small amount of buttercream. But hey ho, you know what? At least it's gluten free and fat free. Yay. Okay. So I just added a bit there, not much. It'll probably just turn pink at first, to be honest. Okay, so now, oh, actually, that looks quite red in the camera. It looks a bit orange. It looks like I've got it in a pink bowl. So already, I'm getting quite a good colour here. I might just add a tiny bit more, but I am pretty happy with that already. That took a lot less than I thought. <laughs> Perfect. Now as I say, it doesn't it does look a different colour to me than it does in the camera. But we're gonna get our cake out now and we are going to swirl this around the sides of the cake. Ta-da! Okay, so <laughs> we've got our buttercream here and palette knife, of course. Then my cake scrapery thing. I still don't know what the technical term is for this. It probably is just cake scraper. So for now it will just be cake scrapery thing. And what I'm going to do is add little small amounts of this around the sides of this cake. Just kind of randomly to be honest. The cake has been firming up in the fridge so this is the buttercream's kind of set on the outside of this, like it sort of formed a bit of a crust, which is what I wanted. So I'm gonna add some small amounts. It is going to look slightly pink now because it's going onto white, but that's okay. It's still the kind of look that I'm going for, to be honest. I'll start to see. Smears of it as we go around. I want to leave white space in between. Then we shall take our cake scraper and holding this at a kind of 45 degree angle to the cake, we are just going to go around the sides. My turntable is turning when I don't want it to. It's a little bit wobbly. And we're just kind of smearing that into the cake, you see. Now I'm going to swirl a little bit on the top as well. Then I'll just go and look at the sides again and see if I want to do a bit more. This turned 
table is very, very squeaky. Just like the doors in my shop, also very, very squeaky. <laughs> Then, just using our palette knife, just get these bits on the top, which you need to the edge. There we go. It's looking quite effective. As you see, it gives quite a dramatic look. What I'll do is I'll chill this down again, and then we'll take it out and see if we want to add any more white buttercream. Okay, I've decided that I'm going to leave this as it is. The thing is, if I add more white, it could end up looking very pink. So, now that's chilled a little bit, we are going to add a drip. I'm just going to choose what side I want to be the front. I think here. And I'm going to use a white chocolate ganache for my drip. I have done a recipe tutorial on this, which again, I will link on the screen if I'm able to, or if not, I'll put it in the description below for you guys. So, do this semi drip, so I'm not going to go all the way around and I'm not going to fill the top with a ganache. I just want a little bit dripping down the side, so just adding small amounts. Some people prefer to like pipe it on the top, but Personally, I've just always done it this way. I don't know if it's the official way, but this is just the way that I like to do things. And you can adjust the length of the drips by basically adding like more or less ganache. It can be quite hard if you're just starting out by doing drip cakes. It's really about temperatures and consistency. So the ganache needs to be warm and runny, but be careful that you don't warm it too much so that it might split. And the cake cold so that when it goes on, it will basically start to set. Here we go, just do a few more. Gosh, these cakes are so heavy. It's all those ingredients. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a few more here. Perfect. There we go, that's the front of our cake. And that will now go back in the fridge to chill down again. Well, I'm very happy with our finished drip cake. It looks very vibrant indeed. I'm going to chill that down again now before we get on with the decorating part, which I'll probably do tomorrow. I'm going to finish it with lots of fresh strawberries, shortbread pieces, little mini meringues, buttercream piping, all that kind of yummy stuff. Tomorrow, my plans are to make some macarons actually. I feel like I haven't made any macarons in a while. I guess I don't make them as regularly as I used to, but I think I've still got it. I've done one or two videos on macarons before about how to make them and also why they don't always go right. Yes, they do take a lot of practice. So if you have any questions about them, please do let me know. And of course, if you have any questions about this cake, then drop them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, that would mean a lot to me. If you've got any video ideas or things you want to say to me, please do come and say hello over on Instagram. And if not, I'll see you very soon for the next one. Bye.